Hey FlossTube, Elena here, the Stitching Farmer. Back for an update. Um, I really haven't been stitching on much other than my Chatelaine. So I thought I'd do something a little different today. I thought I would share my experience with Chatelaine's. Uh, I know there's been some floss tubers doing that, uh, like Maggie Kitchy Whips and uh, Amy, a fiber arts Amy, they started the hashtag Chatelaine Wednesday. So I thought I would share with you my own experience with Chatelaine and my journey and kind of how I discovered it and how I fell in love with Chatelaine. So lately, that's all I've been wanting to stitch is just working on my fairy flower garden mandala. So I'm going to flip the camera around. I'll show you um, my, I have two finishes and two in progress pieces. So I was just going to tell you a little bit about how my discovery of Chatelaine and um, just show, show um, ugh, can't get my words. It's been too long. It's been like two months since I filmed a video. So I'm a little out of practice, but so, and um, so I, you can get up close and personal and get a real good look at um, my completed pieces and my one I have in progress. All right. So I'm going to start with, this is my first Chatelaine I've ever, I ever stitched. It's, um, sparkling peacock mandala so i like i get a lot of questions about chatelaines um i i know a lot of people are intimidated to start them and to work on them but uh, oh, there's a little spot there maybe i can get that up but i'm i wasn't because i didn't know what they were so i was on the internet one day and i was like i really want to stitch a peacock pattern so I was just playing around on Google and I typed in um, peacock cross stitch pattern and like going through them, going through them. And then this one pops up. I was like, wow, that is the most beautiful cross stitch I've ever seen. I can't even believe this is a cross stitch. I have to stitch this immediately. So I like figured out that it was a Chatelaine and and so I um, went on their website, it's like, okay, the pattern's a little pricey. And I was like, I, um, looking through the materials, I was like, wow, this is a lot of stuff. And I was like, I really just want to buy a kit. So I found European cross stitch. And that was the point where I, I realized there was something different about these patterns, something special. <laughs> when I saw the price tag of the kit, I was like, wow, I don't know if I can spend two to $300 on a cross stitch kit, that's, my husband will be like, uh, no, <laughs> like who spends that kind of money on a hobby? I'm like, well, you know, golfers, they buy thousand dollar clubs, but so I kind of like went back and forth. Like, I just can't, you know, I just can't rationalize spending this kind of money for a cross stitch. But then I was like, I really want to stitch it. I really want to, you know, try it out. So finally, I, I just bought it. And I think the wait for this one, it wasn't very long. Like the Gloriana's weren't struggling to be made. So I want to say I had it within a month or two, which was great because I couldn't wait to start it. So there really is a lot. If you look at it, there is a lot of cross stitches. So like this peacock here, it's mostly cross stitches. Like there is... I might have to take the phone off so y'all can get in close. Um, I know there is some specialty stitches in these peacocks. It's been a long time since I stitched this. Oh, it's these here. I don't remember what they were called. I think they're kind of something that Martina made up on her own. Maybe, I don't, they probably do have a name, but... But if you look, there's a good bit of cross cross stitching. These are um, these are eyelets here. Shh. You can pull them open pretty big, make your centers real big. But I don't really like them any bigger than like this. I just want you be able to tell there's an opening. And she uses a lot of um, these crystals. I think they're. These are more rounded crystals. They're not the bicones, but she does use a lot of bicones. 
the center here is heavily beaded. This one is one of the more beaded. I don't, it's not the most beaded piece, but there are a lot of beads on this one. I think she uses this flower medallion in quite a bit of her mandalas. Mandalas? Mandalas. I think I'm saying it the right way the first time. Mandala. Mandala. I remember when I stitched this one, I did all the cross stitching first. And then when I went back and did all the specialty stitches. And then lastly, I went back and did all the beading. I wouldn't recommend doing that. Now I do, um, I'll do all the cross stitching, like I would do all the cross stitches in this section. And I would go back, it's like, these are pretty cool ones. They're like, um, they call them diamond something. Diamond stitches, maybe. They kind of look like a diamond. More eyelets. She has a neat way of doing her half cross stitches. They always point towards the center. So they're, they're not always going the same direction. If you look over here. These half cross stitches are going this way. But I just thought this was the most beautiful cross stitch I've ever seen. I still think it might be. Look at all that sparkle. Just gorgeous. There's a lot of, you can see a lot of the metallics. I think you could probably get by with not buying the silks, but I would have recommend at least getting the metallics because they really do add a lot of shine. And they're not quite as expensive compared to the silks either. But this one is stitched with the I bought the silk pack for this one. And that center is just so many bees. It took me forever to stitch, put all these beads in. And the specialty stitches, her diagrams are, they're okay. You can, I recommend getting the PDF pattern and then you can blow them up. And maybe practice first before you start stitching on your actual get like a scrap piece of fabric and practice some stitches I think the only ones that are really all that complicated are the Jessica stitches I see I can't remember if there's any Jessica stitches in this one I'm not seeing any they're the ones that kind of look like a flower stitch it was a little bit Boring to stitch peacocks four times. But at least there are different colors. I think this one might be my favorite color. Just so much sparkle. I really need to send this off. I'd like to get it framed by um, Rental Framing. I've seen some beautiful sparkling peacocks that she's framed. These are pretty heavily beaded too. No, maybe not. I guess that's just the metallics there. And there's the bike guns. This one took me, I stitched nothing else but this when I, I used to be a monogamous stitcher once upon a time. It took me six months though to stitch this, um, but I, I, like I don't get like a whole, I probably stitched maybe an hour to a day I would say. Now that I, uh, my schedule's a little different, um, I do a week on week off. So my week on, like I don't stitch at all pretty much, but then my week off, I probably stitch a bit more during the days. Like when like my kids are at school, I probably stitch like four hours or so, I'd say a day at least. Sometimes I get to stitch a little bit more. So that was my first finish. Oh, there's these cool little square beads here. I don't know if you can tell if they're square. But unfortunately it just lives under my bed. But I need to get it framed so I can have it living out in the open. 
And then my second finish, this one took me forever to finish, but it is gorgeous. This is Versailles. This was a mystery. This was mystery 20, but then Martina passed away unexpectedly, so it was ended up being released all at once. So I really struggled, like I did really good progress on the center part. Like I really was into stitching this. But then when I got to the palace, my progress slowed down a whole lot because these colors are just so boring. They're all just like creams and grays and not exciting. These trees are cool. Like look at these trees. There's sparkly, I think there's silk and may braid in the middle. Then the outside was a variegated floss. And then they all have like a little button or a little bead on top. There are some cool, okay, so I know there's Jessica stitches in this one. It's hard to see on the camera. These are Jessica stitches here. It's hard to see, but there's like a little bead nested in there. But most of the stitches, they're really not that bad. I think these are probably the most complicated of the Jessicas though. But you kind of get the pattern down and I can't tell you how many times I've had to redo a Jessica stitch. Like here, there you go, up close there. It might be like of a little bird nest. Like these are easy. You just follow the pattern, one, two, three, four. This one was hard. It's just like so much, it's just like back stitching. And I thought the way they did the trees, I can't remember if they're cross stitches or what, there's something different about them though, about the bark. And then these are satin stitches. These are more Jessica's. So with the Jessica's, I've started, you can see how like this one just sits on top of that thread. So I've started running them underneath the, like the last three it kind of gives it more of a cohesive look. There's lots of bicones. Somewhere in here, I miss putting in a bicone. I still got to go back and do that. These um, were kind of cool to do. I like the crossed hatch ribbon here. And there's there are some tile beads. There's a lot of, you can see a lot of the Jessica's. Oops, sorry about that. Those little purple Jessica's. She always, she's such a great designer. She always has most innovative ideas. Like, I don't remember this being a specialty stitch. I just think it was just a cross stitch and then you kind of just outline it. Oh, these fountains, <laughs> these are pretty too. Look at, it looks like there's water just coming off of them. Lots of sparkle. These are fun. These tulips here, they're just straight stitches though. There's nothing really to them. And then I don't know if these are supposed to be like chandeliers or, these are rice stitches. So this, these were a little complicated also mainly because you just use, you're kind of layering the threads. So first you do, I want to say the center stitch here, and then you can see there's gold. So you cross those and then you come back with this variegated silk and you make that design. But once you get the pattern down, it's not that bad. Some more tile stitches or tile beads. There's some eyelets, roads. I think the roads are probably the easiest. 
These are cool looking gardens here. And her sinners are always, see there's another, the flower medallion. This is all beads here. It's hard to stitch beads when there's no cross stitches around. You really have to pay attention and then like use white thread so it really blends with the base or uh, base fabric. And there's an M for Marie Antoinette. I think it's a, someone told me once it was an M and then you see the A also. And there's some more rice stitches in here. I think these were, she referred to these as the fan gardens. And then, this is King Louis. The Sun King. And he also has little on the gates here. So I think there's four different colors of metallic gold. I wasn't real happy with the yellow thread. I'm not sure. If, I know like the cross stitches are the right color. Like this is right. So it makes kind of sense, but I don't know. I guess from afar though, it looks okay. Oh, and the front side of the palace too. Or is this the back side? I'm not sure. I've never been to Versailles. Man, these palaces took me forever to stitch. Oh, these are cool. I love that cross hatch. I remember I stitched this one. It didn't take me too long, but that back, the other one. This is where I'm missing. There should be a bike on right there. Sorry. That's text. This is, is this over one stitching? Yes, this is over one stitching. Teeny tiny little stitches. I gotta remember to just see if I can find that bike and put it in. I thought the trees were so neat. All right, so now I'll move on to my works in progress. So this one here is Mystery 19. I always forget to show this in my whip, annual whip parade. I don't know why. I just forget about it. I've also forgotten which way is up and which way is down. We're gonna go... Mm, gonna go this way. So this one gets referred to as desert tent, I think. I've always thought of it as Arabian Nights. Let's see if I can move my camera a little bit here. It's, no, it's too heavy. All right, I'm trying to avoid showing you my messy craft room. So I definitely have this the wrong way though. I should go this way. I can't remember how far I made it before I kind of gave up on it. I want to say maybe I, I might have gotten halfway. So I wasn't real happy with this part, these 
stitches here. It doesn't look so bad on the darker color, but I just feel like it looks a bit sloppy. So this is kind of like you're drinking tea, I guess. So this was stitch over one, as well as this part hanging down. I don't have any of the beads yet. I know there is, I think the center is like all tile beads. This is a really big Jessica stitch. So you see how I could have ran that thread under and it kind of gives it a more uniform look. I'll show you in my next whip what I mean. Lots of road stitches. Really pretty colors in this one. But see, they, these stitches just didn't turn out great. And I think I just wasn't very happy with the way they turned out. So it kind of got cast to the side. I would like to pull it back out and finish it because I did make a good bit of, oh, let's see my animal hair all over it. I did make a pretty good bit of progress. I still got a ways to go though. These are supposed to be the tents here. So really cool stitches. Good bit of metallics and silks in this one. I don't remember what this material was called, but do you remember it was a pain to work with? She advised wetting it down and then using it. I wish I could remember what it was called. Let me see if I can pull it from my iPad in here. So let me see if I can pull up the finished product. Uh, no, that's not what I want. I still, you can see where I've still got to fill in. I've done two of the four. Mm. So this one is referred to as Desert Night Tent Mandela. This is it. So I've done like this center portion. This part looks a bit complicated. And I'm not sure how well this part, the blue, will show up on my fabric. I'm going to try it with the call for, and then if I don't like it, I might switch out to like a gold color. I think I think it should show up though. So, like, most of the center here, I think the whole center is beaded. I want to say that's why it's not done at all. It is pretty. I want to get back to it. So, lastly, I have my current whip. And I've been stitching away on this one. I forget how addictive Chatelaine's can be. until you start working on them and you're like, I can't put this down. Let me, let me see if I can take off. I have it on my monstric frame here. So let me see if I can take the side bars off. So let me pull up what it looks like too. So this is the fairy flower garden mandala. So this is what it will look like when it's done. 
This one has been stitched quite a few times. And then there's another pattern also called, um, I want to say it's called flower medallions. So if you're not a fairy person, you can switch out the fairies for flowers, but you do have to buy two patterns. That was what I was originally planning on doing. And then I had a daughter. So I was like, well, I'm just going to do the fairies. Because I think it would be pretty in a little girl's room. So that one's the one I'm working on. That's what this pink dress is here. Let me, I might have to take my phone off the stand and I'll try not to make you seasick. So when you purchase these frames here, I think you could probably get away with buying just one or two pairs of the sidebars, maybe a couple different sizes. I want to say this one's a 20. I feel like much bigger than this and I wouldn't be able to reach the top parts. So I, I think the 15 and the 20s are good sizes. They've changed the design. They don't have, um, it doesn't, it kind of has more of like a cup, cupping kind of thing, I guess you could say. And then I use, I do use these fabric clips. It's important to remember to take them off when you're done stitching to unsnap them. Like I leave them, let me just, I leave them on there all the time. And just unhook them when I'm done. So I always save the beading till the end. Once I move down to the bottom, I'll start beading then. Also a good thing, like with the way it is now, with these, um, did I call it Monstric? That's the name of their, this is the quantum frame. But with the new design, you can turn them half a turn instead of having to turn it 180 degrees, essentially. Let's make some room here. So like, if you had it out like this, I think it would be difficult to reach the top part if you had it too big. I'm sorry, I'm trying to be not so movey, but I can't really move this one around like I could the other ones. My lighting in here is not great today either. The colors aren't really showing real well, which I know blues don't show great anyway. So we got some little Jessica stitches in the flower. So with these, I have tucked that last stitch in. So see how it looks more uniform around? This part has been the most difficult part of this whole design. Like this takes a lot of focus. You really have to pay attention to what you're doing. And it, it wouldn't look too crazy if you were off a bit. I also wouldn't recommend doing this on Ada just because um, you do a lot of like in kind of in the middle of a stitch, you'd have to, you know, run through the fabric. Uh, so with, so you can see with these Jessica's, I laid it over the top. So it does kind of give it a different look. I believe there will be beads anywhere you see a hole, there's a bead. These are eyelets. Some people pull them open really wide. I just kind of do, so you know, you know it's there, but I just don't like a real big hole in it. But most of the, this border here is just cross stitches. This one here had, I don't think has any specialty stitches except for this little one here, which was easy. It's just straight stitches. thinking there are little roots in here. Those are pretty easy. 
The only one I really think is that difficult is the Jessica stitches. And you just really gotta pay attention to which hole you're going into. Finally finished all of these. As you can see though, I have not come in and done this floral garden thing. These are the dragonflies here. This was this was the part that made me fall in love the most with this design. As you can see, they have no bodies. They're disembodied dragonflies, just wings and a head. So that means their bodies are completely beaded. And it's like a variety. It's not just one solid colored beads. It's like all the colored beads. This part, uh, I didn't really enjoy doing. So I'm not looking forward to it. I still got to do it two more times. A lot of this dragonfly's wings are beaded here. And then this is the border. So I love the Jessica stitches. They are kind of a pain, but so this one I've also tucked in those last three stitches. I think it gives it a much nicer look. I'm trying to get out of the shadow here. I like these medallions. Colors were kind of interesting. It's like, do these really, you don't think they're gonna go together, but then it, it does look good. And I was working on this last night. First fairy, almost done with her dress. So this is, it's all cross stitches so that I've done so far. So. If you're intimidated by these, I would say just start with the cross stitches. There is a lot of cross stitches in these pieces. And her body does, I know the body bodice of her dress will have specialty stitches. And then her face will be over one. Oh, there's four of them. And they're each different colors. So it does get kind of old stitching things four times or like, like these are so many of those but at least like you know with this one and the peacock I got to stitch in different colors so that kind of takes the monotony out a little bit this one's coloring it's a little disappointing it's really not showing up great <clears throat> I think those are neat. Those little, I think she called them bellflowers. So this is mostly what I've been stitching on for this month. Uh, I finished, so I still had to do, I finished those three. I got all this done. I guess it's been two months since you've seen me last. I have picked up a couple pieces, but I really feel like I haven't put a lot of progress in them and I really just wanted to do a video where I just focus on shadow lanes and kind of shared my journey with you and talked about maybe kind of ease some trepidations about starting this but there really is just there is a lot of cross stitches and I think with practice you can get these specialty stitches down uh, I'm able to find, follow her diagrams fine I know some people do struggle with them but I'm sure there's even better diagrams if you go online and look. Sometimes, like, I blow them up on my iPad and sometimes the numbers are a, a bit blurry. It's a mess. I know. Every time I come in here to clean, I just feel overwhelmed and just walk right back out. So hopefully, I'm hoping to finish, so it's April. My goal is to finish this by the end of the year. I know it's it's gonna be hard. There's a, I have a lot of distractions and 
you know, I have a full-time job and three children, so. But hopefully, I feel like I've put in good progress. So, crossing my fingers, I can finish by the end of the year because I really, I think I'm going to order. I told my husband I needed another one of these frames. I didn't tell him I wanted one. I was like, I need one. So he said that's fine. So I'm probably gonna order another frame. There's two distribute. Um, you can no longer order directly from Omnic. You have to order from um, either Lindy Stitches. She's um, her company is one of the suppliers, and Hobby House Needleworks is the second supplier. So I'm gonna order from one of those two. I think I'm gonna buy just the same the same exact one here. I want to say these are 20, and I want to say these bars are 80 here. I would like to get the new design. I would like to get a 20 and a 15, and I want every size of these bars. That's my goal, but I'm thinking I'm just going to, you know, spread it out over the next few years until my complexion's collection is complete of my frames. Because it is nice, like, you don't have to keep these on. So you can just roll these up here and then just put it in, like, a pillowcase and store it away. But it, you really do need to have, like, it on here, keep it on here. Unless it doesn't bother you just to switch them out on time. It, it's a bit of a pain, I think, just to get it just right. You could probably do, like, a better job. And the linen, so the linen does slip out easily of these. Ada usually, like the dimensions kits, I feel like they stick a lot better in these. So what I do is I take a piece, you know, you could probably take a piece of batting. This is just paper towel. It may not be great for the linen, but it gives it that thickness to hold it in place so it doesn't slip out from under this dowel rod here because I'm always trying to get it as tight as I can, because I like it really taut. And so if it's not rolled up much, if you're like working on the edge, then I'll start slipping out. If you're, you know, if you have it like, like this is how I'm working on it right now. So it'll start slipping out from under the dowel rod if it's not real thick. So well, if you have any questions or comments or anything you'd like me, if I didn't sh show it good enough, you know, just drop me a comment below and I can always show it again. Uh, I think the next video I'll, I'll probably go through what I have worked on and um, there was some interest in seeing my quilting progress, so maybe I'll show it on the end. Um, hasn't really been a whole lot for life updates. My husband's birthday's tomorrow, so he's going to take the day off and we'll go over to Pensacola and maybe eat sushi or go shopping. Um, I can't remember my oldest son or my middle son. He did turn eight. So he is, I feel bad for him because he is definitely a middle child. Um, I feel like he's always forgotten. We had a call his grandmother on his birthday and be like, um, did you happen to send anything for Holden's birthday? She was just like, oh no, I forgot. So she like immediately posted in the mail and I felt, I felt kind of bad because they're always, they always come for my oldest son's birthday and then they always come for the daughter's birthday because she, which their birthdays are, you know, February to, um, hello kitty, to September. So they have a little bit more space. Um, try and think if there's any other excitement. Uh, I don't really have much. Uh, I did finish reading *The Women* by Kristen Hanna, and when I say read reading, I mean audiobook. And it was so good. I loved it. Um, I feel like there's not many books. I've read so many books on World War II. I feel like there's just so much out there, and and for good reason. I mean, there was a lot that happened during World War II that needs to be remembered. But then it almost feels like some of things have been forgotten. Like you don't, there's not much on Vietnam War out there. So it was kind of interesting. She was, she's a nurse during, I'm afraid he's gonna like paw, claws on the 
fabric. But there's not much out there on Vietnam and she was a nurse during the war and then it's so it talks about that. The first part of the book is all about the war. It's really intense. It's really good. And then the latter half of the book, um, she's coming home from the war and just her experience after Vietnam. So I highly recommend that one. It wasn't as good, of course, as The Nightingale, but I really did enjoy it. Oh, let's see if I can get this kitty off of here. So um, any questions or comments, just drop me a line below and uh, I try to answer them. Sometimes I don't get back right away, but I do get to them eventually. Or I can answer in the next video too. So I will see y'all hopefully in a month. Take care.